From Slide Nerd, this is Weaves. What's up, guys? Pow! Now that sounds like a punch, doesn't it? This time, we're gonna calculate something, raise to something, without using your math class. So long, you had this math class, you had this power function. When someone t told you, calculate 3 raised to 4, you simply used to go and say math.pow 3, 4, and you got the answer, right? Now, let's see how to do it the hard way, which is always the part which I love. So enter base part number, you say 2, the user enter exponent, the user says 3, calculate 2 raised to 3, which is 8. This is what exactly we're gonna do, but remember, no math class allowed. That's our rule. So let's go ahead and see how that's done. So you wanna find 2 raised to 4, you're simply gonna have to multiply 4 times, right? Something like this, 2 into 2 into 2 into 2, that gives you 16, that's 2 raised to 4. In short, you have this 4 times to calculate 2 into 2 each step. You add 1 more 2, I mean multiply it. So let's see how that does, how that works programmatically. You say 1 into 2 is 2. You take this 2 on the left side, multiply that by 2, you say 4. Take this 4 on the left side, multiply by 2, say 8. Take this 2 on the left, 8, 16. So in short, this number, 1, 2, 4, 8, that number you call as t, right? And every time you double t because you're multiplying with 2 over here. So I said t into 2 in a general way. And since this 2 is going again to the left side, I'll say t equals to t into 2. Every time I'm simply doubling it and storing the new result in t. That's exactly what I'm doing. How many times do you guys do this? Well, since you want to calculate 2 raised to 4, you have to start from i equals to 1 and you stop when it is equals to 4. But you can also start from 0 and go less than 4. It's your choice. And what's the value of t beginning? Well, for the starters, t starts exactly at 1. Now you guys are wondering, hey, why the hell should t start at 1, not at 0? Or not at something, some other number? Remember, we are saying 1 into 2 first. So we need 1 first. So we say 1 into 2 the first time. i is 1, it's 1 into 2. i becomes 2, this becomes 2 into 2. When i becomes 3, this becomes 4 into 2 and blah blah blah. Because it keeps doubling every time. If you put 0 over here, the answer is going to be 0. No matter what you do after that. So let's see how this can be general for a number, say, t for a number say number and a power say p. So it's simply if you have a number other than 2 like if you have 8 raised to 8 then you will say t is t into number and you will start at 1 you will go all the way up to p where p is your power at the top that the fourth thing that's what your p is and you increase i by 1 each time and that's exactly the for loop. So now we are gonna go into NetBeans and see how this baby works. So let's go ahead give that a shot. So now with NetBeans, I have an empty project with a buffered reader for taking input. You guys are definitely familiar with how buffered reader works. I declare two variables, b and e, for taking the base and the exponent. Then I say t equals to 1, as per the logic we discussed. Then I have a for loop, which starts at i equals to 1, goes all the way up to the exponent, which is e. You can start from 0 to less than e, or 1 to less than equals to e. It's your choice. Then I write t is t into b, which is t is t into number as per with uh, the presentation we discussed then I have a println statement I print t I run this control s shift f6 on that beats enter base I say 2 enter exponent I say 4 it prints 16 no problems enter base 10 then I say enter exponent I say 3000 it's working perfectly so I hope you guys understood something out of this it's a simple program we avoided the math.pow function and did it on our own using loops if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel I would love to hear your comments Comment, let us know what you think about this. Stay tuned, we'll be putting more bits. I'll catch you guys later. Have a nice day.